Hey everyone, I'm Karen Walby Solomon, and welcome to What's IGN Crushing On, IGN Africa's official entertainment podcast. I'm your host, and I'm joined as always by my producer and editor Rebecca Barchers. So, this is a show where we discuss all things entertainment and pop culture with a new guest every week. We bring recommendations, news and fun facts, sometimes touching on the more serious issues surrounding these topics. Magic lives in the very fabric of nature. Never thought I'd meet one of us out here in the wild. Wow, you are so lost. You must be a fairy. I am a fairy. One of our your first year is all about the element you were born with. This is something you'll learn your first day in class. Fairy magic. Holy shit. Is linked to emotion. Love, hatred, fear. The stronger the emotion, the stronger the magic. Today you get to learn to use your magic. You focus, you learn, you grow. Eventually the answers will come. Do you know why the barrier exists? To protect the school from burned ones. Be thankful you've never seen a burned one. Bloom. They're after me. Bloom, one of the most powerful fairies the other world has ever known. I'm not like the rest of you. I didn't grow up here. Magic can be dangerous, as you well know. Someone's been lying to her. The history of this place is a lot darker than they want us to know. What you need are answers. Be careful who you trust. There's a war on the horizon. This is what we've been training for. We can help our friend. They deserve to know what I am. Whatever you're thinking of doing, I'm here. I always knew your path wouldn't be like everyone else's. But I can't wait to see who you become. I was kind of bummed I didn't see a single pair of wings. This week we have a very special episode for you. We'll be focusing on the Netflix series Fate the Wing Saga. So, I'll be bringing you a discussion about the series where I'm joined by previous guests, Sloane and Zayan, to talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about the show. And then we have interviews with the main cast of the film, which is really exciting. So, stay tuned. Please note that there are tons of spoilers in this episode, so I suggest listening after you've watched the show. I'm joined today by my own Wings Club. Hi! Hello! And we're going to go through the characters, the storylines, what worked, what didn't work, and, and recommend some of our favorite Supernatural shows at the end. So guys... What were your initial thoughts of the show? I wasn't sure what to make of it at first because I knew that my son watched the animation. Mm. Um, so that like, was my starting off point, but I had no reference for it really. Um, I like elemental magic just in general. I wrote a whole book about it, so it's my go-to thing. I love elemental magic. So I was keen for it. Um, but I didn't know what to make of it at first because was the teen show, was the adult show, because the monsters were kind of scary. So, you know, like you couldn't, it's not, it's mm. not something you're going to watch as a kid, even though they've watched the animated show. My son can't watch this because then, then there's the swearing. So you're like, oh, okay, I didn't know we were swearing here. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's like it didn't know where it wanted to be. Is what I felt. So, uh, like initially, I was a bit confused, just as to what exactly, what kind of show this was. 
But then once it's once it started, you know, the episode started going on, I started getting into it. I didn't really feel that intrigued by the whole burned ones plotline. Mm. I actually I was more into their relationships, building the character relationships with each other. The burned the burned ones plotline just felt a bit lacking. Like it didn't I don't know. Maybe it was just me. And you sir? Well, firstly, I just learned what elemental magic is, so <laughs> Me too. I, was like, what is <laughs> I love that I'm learning things on the show. Um, I did not know what Winx was going into this. I wasn't going to watch it. I watched the first episode and then I fell asleep. <laughs> and for me, that's just a sign that this is not for you. Move on. Um, but then I actually sat down and I watched it in one whole day. And the funny thing is you don't, if you're not like really paying attention, you don't know where the episode ends and the next one begins. So it literally yeah. just felt like I was watching one long story mm. and it was like very slow in the beginning, but mm. by episode four, it was like, Oh, okay. A lot is happening here. And then there are people back from the dead and I'm like, okay, this is great. I want more of this then. Cause in the beginning it was very, High school girls, mean girls, I'm mm. not fitting in. I feel sorry for myself. And then they said, let's put the feelings aside quickly and let's deal with some real magic. And that's when the show got good. Yeah. I don't know. I think for me, it was like a mixture of the two. Like, uh, I was like, oh, I really like magic. But then when I started it, I was like, okay, this seems like it's going to be a slog, especially with, with like the whole mean girls type. Um, and it just seemed very like everybody was fitting into boxes, man, like into a stereotype, mm. like I'm the popular girl and I'm the I'm the kooky outsider and I'm the one that's like But I suppose jovial. that's what they did. I mean, it was it is something that's adapted from a cartoon mm. for kids and that's the stereo that's the the tropes, I suppose, the stereotypes that they they put them in. Mm. The nature magic girl is the you know the awful buff the temple <laughs> one who 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 had you know the good at the plants and all that stuff the the one the one the girl with fire magic obviously has read he yeah that's a bit on the nose but okay let's go with it. I mean but you know those are the the visual things that they can use in cartoons mm. for children and then you you adapting it to be a grown up show so I understand how those things carry over. Yeah, but oh, it really it says, like, what I did like was as the show went on, they sort of like moved out of those boxes. Mm. So you've got to kind of either you got to see why they're in that box because mm. of like, you know, you know, their background or anything like that. Or they like blurred the lines and they showed other sides of the characters. So I, I, I also got more into it like as it went on. And I did so. There's a lot of things that I still felt like lacking, which I hope that like in season two that they would solve. But I do think that for a six episode show, I was very into it. Like I was yeah. into this. But also, I feel like we discovered that um, Bloom was a changeling very quickly. Yeah. It was like first episode. She just got there and they were like, nah. It's in here. <laughs> <laughs> How you're changing. Must be first day of school, so this and school? also, also that the first year figured it out. The first year figured out that she was changeling. But I don't even, babe. It's like if you if you know if you you seeped in that mythology, you are likely to know. Like you know, like when you look at the Ron, how he treated Harry. Okay. I mean, like yeah. there's a lot of stuff I that guess. he knew about Harry. Like he knew what the parcel yeah. tongue was. Yeah. So it's like I think if because maybe I I Aisha grew up with that, like she knew. Yeah. Our changelings. Okay, yeah. So she's more likely to know what it was. But what do you what did you guys think about the whole like changeling? What do you guys think of Bloom and a whole um chosen one type scenario? She was thought it was very, very self indulgent. Yeah. She's my least favorite. Everything character. yes, everything was oh my word, Bloom's feelings. Mm. So I can just like a lot. Like, I understand Stella because I was like, girl, same. Stella's a princess. Stella has a real problem. <laughs> Stella has real problems. Her mother, Stella has a teacher, her mother. But 
But Bloom, I don't know. I just feel like in a lot of these shows, there's always somebody who is like the chosen one. Mm. And like, find, like the Elena from Vampire yeah. Diaries or the, you know, it's like. I find like it's very difficult for them to write these these characters, these like this hero's journey. Um, because they always end up being the least likable character on the show. I mean, it's Sabrina, the least likable character on the show. Elena, <laughs> the least likable character on the show. Blue, again. Bloom is, well, not as bad as Sabrina. The other characters, I think, far out China. Mm. And not, and that's nothing, nothing against the actress. I don't, I don't think. I think she did. She the did what she could. She, yeah. she did what she could. She did what she could. Of her. But I think the other characters are just more interesting than us. Talkers. Talkers. Yeah, I think. I think with Bloom also, it's, I, I've been watching the original cartoon and um, it's also sort of the same sort of thing. Like she's just, she's a chosen one type. Um, she wasn't, she's also like adopted and and all these kind of things. But like, I think whereas with like, we could see the, the other characters sort of develop as characters, she just had to push the plot along. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe we need more of like a, a team thing than a Bloom story. Yeah. That's I think towards the end when it, it got a bit better when she saw... Because she also just went, went very much on her own. Like mm. I'm just that, do I think that's what annoyed own. me so much. Yes. Yeah. All of the other characters, they kind of grew as a group. And she was always off doing her own thing. And I'm like, even when she said, because even she said, what does she say to this guy? Like, I, I know you, you trust me, but you still would have stopped me. Mm. I was like, yeah, girl, because was that when she dragged him? Yeah. Yes, after she dragged him. I was and like, you, come on. You made bad life decisions. Anyone would have stopped you. There's, there's a scene, the scene when, um, when, when like Aisha goes and she tells um, the principal about what Bloom is doing or whatever, and she said Bloom is being very selfish, and I'm like, this. Mm. Is Dude, the school is being raided, but you think, okay, now is a good time to release this prisoner. Yeah. That the principal obviously has there for a good reason. But she's like, nope. But I'm so glad. Like, I think that just um, maybe the, the self-awareness of the story is that she goes and apologizes. Yes. I thought that was amazing because I never seen Sabrina or Elaine oh or any of those going and apologizing for what they've done. Sabrina kind of apologized, but um, what's his name? Ambrose was already having a mental breakdown, so it didn't count. Shame. <laughs> but, Shame um, <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, I, uh, it does show, like, I lie, I really love that scene. I was like, if there's anything to save Bloom in my eyes, it was that scene. Mm. Like, you know, you should be saying, I was acting selfish. I yeah. didn't think before I did something, I was very, like, like tunnel vision y, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Because my actions cool, like she took responsibility for actions. Mm. So that's kind of cool. So okay, so what do you guys think about her love interest, Sky? Boring. <laughs> boring. So 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 boring. boring. What boring burger? Oh my word! <laughs> oh my word! And the worst is, I said to my friend, um, we were watching it on Saturday. I said, his voice doesn't match his face. So every time he's on screen, it feels like I'm watching something that's been dubbed. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, anyways, not a fan. I was, they deserve each other, I suppose. They're so bored to be boarding together. I I hate, like, I I hate the ship where you know where it's going to go, where it's like they meet on their first day and then you know they're going to get together. And then yeah. it's like, oh, I don't know why I'm drawn to her, whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, we know it's gonna go. You're gonna be a stellar, then you're gonna go back. You're gonna go to Bloom uh, throughout yeah. the season. I hate that. No, surprise me. Do something shocking. Yeah, it was it was predictable. So it was just mm, I didn't care about it. And Irvin, bad boy, I, big fan of his. I, big, also, big, big like, fan really of Irvin. I really like Irvin. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what it is about this boy, but I am here for him. He, oh, all of his he's naughty, he's naughty. Yes. You can just tell. Oh, he's, he's a... going to get you into trouble. And I love that in a man. 
Oh, he's like like Shamir always says, he's a bad boy, but he's a sad boy. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can see there's something like because you used to be friends with um what's her yeah. name with Tara. Oh. I, was, I was actually more interested in like that background, like what was there? Because I think the what I gathered was like the year before he was like this big old geek and used to. There was a very very a cute moment between them also. Yeah. In the one episode. So when he's so honest. Be, yeah. Yeah. I really liked it. I didn't really understand that, to be honest. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where, how she and him were friends. I didn't know how her and that Dane guy was friends. I was like, where, where did this friendship come from? And yeah. and then him and Dane were friends also. I'm like, well, did you all grow up at a ballet school? What is happening here? How do you so know her you? and Dane became friends on like the first day when she saved Dane. Oh, um, because Raven was like trying to bully him. Yeah. Yes. So that's how the two of them became friends. Um, Raven and Dane became friends. Because Dane smart him. Literally just, no. Uh, well, they yes, both but then they just like spoke. Yeah. And then he was like, he gave him advice on school and stuff like stay focused. <laughs> Don't get involved with stuff. <laughs> you know? What do you guys think of Dane? I was very confused by that character. I think that Dane is really a waste of a character. I don't know what his motivation is. I don't know what purpose he serves. The only purpose I could think that he served was to move along the Beatrix plot. To get... Literally. Like like he was literally a tool for for Bloom to get in there when she was um, captured. Like that's all he was. He was just like a, a plot device. Yeah, what a waste of a character. I thought he was going to die. Like, I literally said, I'm like, you're going to kill the only He honestly on could have. It would have been, <laughs> that wouldn't have like, died. acceptable loss. Yeah. <laughs> so I also wanted to ask you about um, Sam. While we're, while we're on I the topic of boys. Him. I liked Sam. I thought they were really cute. But also, I just like Jacob Dunning because he's from MDG, so. <laughs> cute. <laughs> Anything I, Daniel Sherman directed. I think that what I really thought was cool was that so in the original cartoon it's it's very much like divided by by gender. So all the girls mm. are fairies and all the boys are specialists. And then yeah. there's like another another school with like witches, which is like the evil people, which is like Beatrix is like a mixture of the bad guys from there. But um but in this version you see like male witches like Sam. And then, like, when you yeah. saw, like, the, the, the fight, the specialist training, there was girls as well. Yeah. So, I thought it was kind of cool that they sort of, like, integrated it a bit. Um, yeah, I also way- thought at first, because I, I, remember, I remember that much from watching with mm. Rushdie, is that all the girls are fairies and all the, the boys are specialists. So, I was also like, oh, okay, I like that they mixed it up. But now, um, I didn't have a strong <laughs> affiliation towards Sam. I actually thought he was going to die when, when that burn went. I'm like, <laughs> why did no one die from the burn one attack? Yeah, not even Sky's father. Like, no one, no one significant No one died. died. So I was like, so I thought, okay, they're, they're surely going to kill this brother. And then, because, and I mean, it'll be sad. Like, Tara will be upset. The father will be upset. Musa will be upset. But no. Sloan, do you have any strong Sam feelings? I have no feelings about Sam whatsoever. (laughs) I I thought it was cute, sure. But as a character, like, if they killed him off, yeah. That is true. As a character, he was was kind of non. Like, again, like they non-essential. Yeah. But but that makes me think, like, what is the reason... What was the reason for him then? Like, what, what we Sometimes you just need Musa. filler characters. No, I think, again, his, his reason was for Muse's development. Because mm. yeah. in, the, in the end, when, when he's busy dying and she just goes off and, I can't do this again, I can't do this again. Yeah. It's really for her growth more than anything else, which is, I'm fine with, actually. If they're going to grow a, if they're gonna grow a character like that. I was telling Zayan, so when I was watching the cartoon, um, the only real, like, ship that I had was, like, the one ship that's not in the show, and it's um, 
Musa and Riven. And they are like, I love them in the cartoon because like it's very much like a like an enemies to lovers type vibe because he's like oh yeah what about or like angry. oh there was like a brief scene between yes, the two yes. of them and I was like I like this that. is spicy yeah. yeah I wonder if they, if they'll do that in season two if they'll maybe explore that but I, we I, might possibly go there but I feel like they won't do that until Sam I don't know Sam has to get out the way and look Sam, like could a, yeah, Sam could still die Sam could still die. <laughs> I did um I did ask the actor um who plays Musa like what are the chances and she's like I don't know <laughs> we had that scene so I feel like they put that scene in for a reason so you know but maybe it's just like a nod mm. to like fans it could be but I feel like it would be cool for Raven actually because she looks like she's someone who would challenge him mm. rather than Matrix who's Like an evil, evil bitch. bitch. Yeah. I felt so sad for the principal. Oh my oh, yeah. god. I was hoping we would get to this part of the conversation. Because are you serious, you guys? For what? For Farah. Oh, for Shame. Farah. Shame. She tried to. They or? just, all she wanted to do was keep everyone safe. Mm-hmm. Got a neck snap. Running over the, sc- running all around the school, causing shenanigans, letting people out. I didn't expect that. They say, was I didn't creepy. expect it. She was. I didn't. I, like I felt like she had this uniform motor on the entire time. Like I didn't know if I was supposed to be scared of her or not because she just looked like a cross old lady. <laughs> Uh, um, I like when Bloom was like when she had that vision of her and she's like she's too far, she's too old to be my mother so. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if, if for a minute if, if Farah wasn't her mother when she asked for that hug ew I never thought that no I think <laughs> when Farah you? was like <laughs> <laughs> when Farah was shocked that, 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 that Rosalind was the one who took her Then I knew uh, that, that there was only a certain amount that, that far I knew. Because I still thought maybe it's like a Dumbledore thing where she's just like withholding information no. until she gets to that time. But but it seemed like she doesn't, she didn't know like a lot. But um, what is it going to say about but about Rosalind? I did like about the show is that we were never sure about Rosalind. Like one minute mm. I'm like maybe Rosalind's right. Then I'm like maybe she's wrong. Oh no, I never trusted Rosalind. I was like the most. I know the moment we are thought maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe they weren't telling. It was a, it was a short moment because <laughs> that when when she was breaking her out, I was like, uh, uh-uh, that's mm. <laughs> well, this is no, a bad idea. Don't do it. Please. We've seen you know, too many episodes of Vampire Diaries where you break <laughs> at the, the worst know. thing in the worst <laughs> thing. That's, all, that's how Vampire Diaries goes. It's like a, that, that Russian watched. dolls. So you yeah. take up, you, you, you're like, oh no, I have to get the one that's worse than this. Then it's worse than you must deal with that problem. <laughs> it's like, you must get Damon. We've it. But what is worse in Damon Catherine? What is worse in Catherine Because Klaus? What is worse in Klaus? Uh, Silas. Silas first. No, yeah. it's just Klaus, you know, Silas. Then it's like, you know, it goes on. What's before Silas? It's just... <laughs> Michael. <laughs> it's always a, a, a bigger threat. Uh-huh. So I'm like, oh, no, when Rosalind came out, I'm like, girl, what do you Just for uh-huh. her to tell you what you're, you're 23 and me, um, here, let's teach this. <laughs> <laughs> But I call human out for that. <laughs> you stole that name. And you still don't have answers. St- yeah, we still don't know who's your parents. We still don't know who your parents are. Let's talk about the other I girls think. quickly. So let's talk about... Um, okay, so Aisha, Tara, Musa, and Stella. So what did you guys think of them? Oh, wait. wait let me actually let me go first. Sorry. Um, so you guys know about this whole whitewashing controversy? No. So in the original cartoon, like it was supposed to be like very diverse. So Aisha's obviously like the black girl. Mm. And then Musa was like East Asian. They said that she was like modeled after Lucy Liu. Okay. And then this this actress is white. And then Tara isn't a character in the original series, but the cousin Flora is. And yeah, Flora is... 
And Florida looks like, it's supposed to look like Jennifer Lopez. So she must be like a Latina okay. character. Like Latino. Yeah. So so for mo- for most people, they're like, okay, they they replace two other characters with white actors. So the only POC in the in the group is Aisha. Is Aisha. Is Aisha. So I don't know how they will change it. And they say, well, and it, I mean, the, the option is they bring in the, the technology fairy and make her Asian. And bring in Florida next season. Why would you make the technology fairy Asian? Because, <laughs> because she's because she was white in the cartoon, and they have enough white characters, and they need and you know at least to make up for the fact that they that they the casting of Musa was wrong. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So at least just make another character that would have been white, make that a uh, different ethnicity. And then well, we'll have to see what they do. Bring Florida in and make her like Hispanic or whatever. All I want mm-hmm. for the next season, if they get another season, is I want like a lot of action now. Mm. Especially mm-hmm. considering the way that it ended and the girls came in there holding hands on the sisterhood of the traveling pension. <laughs> and I was like, okay, there's no more fights between the girls. Now this group mm. is solid. Now I need mm. them to fight. I would also like to yeah. see how the magic works to get them more. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want more. now. Because that, I, I mean, don't they all get wings? I mean, the are they supposed to get wings? In the, in the cartoon, they all have, in... like everyone has wings in the cartoon. Like in the cartoon, okay. they have wings. But so, in the show, um, didn't Farah say to Bloom that yeah. they used to have wings, but because mm-hmm. of evolution, they've... Yeah. They don't have wings anymore. Transformation own... magic has been lost or yeah. something. That means they don't have budget for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> I mean, don't have budget. But, it, yeah, I would like to see more of them. I um, I think now that they've established the characters in season one and how they, how they work with each other and establish the world and the magic and the rules mm. that they can go into season two with more action like we don't have to explain it again yeah so hopefully that's what they do i also want to see like background to- okay so season one we got a lot of background for musa we got a lot of background for stella so mm. give us more aisha background give us more oh yeah we got no aisha background we actually. know nothing why is she nothing. so all i know is that aisha is a water pokemon <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Other than that, I know nothing about her as a character. Yeah, and she's like very stickler to the rules. Yeah. And she's a, what And I don't even know? mind that she was a snitch because she did the right thing. That's what I thought. I was just going to say, you know what? It's showing my age. Dear That's lady. exactly <laughs> what I thought my age. I would have been like, you can't believe this girl selling her friends out. Mm. But I was like, I'll tell them. No, she, she did the right thing. Trouble, and they're going to just catch her nonsense shenanigans off with tell the people. I'm like, actually, you're so right. I mean, like, and she's, and also, like, she also seems to be like a voice of reason. She's like, I've been sitting in this office, eavesdropping all the time. The lady, the lady's just been trying to keep us safe. She hasn't been catching her nonsense. I'm like, I'm like, you see, someone is the voice of reason. But also, like, exactly. I also feel like, I don't know, I, I tweeted about this and I'm like, I hope they don't like Bonnie Bennett. Or... I saw that tweet of yours. Yes. Yeah, like, it's also like she's always like taking care of Bloom. Like mm. making sure Bloom is doing the right thing, like helping Bloom and not give it, like giving her own story. Her, like give her love interest, give her friendships. I mean, I don't know. Or storylines with other characters. I like that one that one scene where she was actually like, I'm actually done with your nonsense. You <laughs> go do you. You are drunk as this. <laughs> you want to go talk to the principal like this? Uh. Do your thing. I'm not getting involved. I was like, yes, girl, go home. <laughs> <laughs> and then like um so in Tera, what do you guys think of Tera? Talks a lot. She talks a lot. Very yes. good heart. Bless her soul. <laughs> um and also, I, think I would just... love to have a friend like a very mm. reliable. Also I, like also I love be... that she She's a plant Pokemon, <laughs> is what I'll call her. But she can do a lot. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, I like that they she seemingly so. I want I want her to stuff. I want her to to essentially do or be what um what was that girl's name on Sky High? Oh, um, um, Layla. Was it Layla? Mm. Yeah. That was also the plant Pokemon. Yeah, killer for us. Yes, yes, I want that kind of grand theatrics from her. <laughs> I like that she's seemingly soft, but when you push her, mm. she doesn't back down. Because yeah. she looks like a girl who grew up with brothers. Mm. Well, one brother, apparently. But I do like that. Um, yeah, or, like as you were saying, you wanted to evolve. I want to see them all evolve. Yeah, like like as you could see, Stella like Stella can make herself invisible. Mm. Like I want to see yeah, Musa. Like you know, now she's only busy with like. Or the like or the feelings, but sure, but like surely, like soon she should she should be able to like, like like um change other people's feelings. Like if somebody's angry, calm oh, them down. Do yeah. No, I don't like, even want her to be able to change people's feelings. I wanted to channel that malkrach <laughs> into little energy balls and shoot yeah. energy balls yeah, from like, my hands. I feel like it's to... more stuff. Like what um. Like or make shields or something like well, like I yeah, I used to do I, I, Yeah. Like this, this like like I just yeah I want to see them level up and do like quieter stuff. Oh yeah, like those level up in anime is like like Naruto. He just keeps getting beaten and beaten mm. and stuff. Like, yeah. And surely, like if, as they're going into like training and stuff, that that should be the the. That sh- I mean, why else would they have training if not to level up? Because you can't. And I like that Musa was training also because she knew that uh, power wasn't. An, of, uh, an offensive power like mm. she can't fight using her power so she wanted to physically be able to defend herself I like that and then we got that cute moment of the line, Ruben mm. <laughs> maybe that's how oh maybe that's what's going to happen maybe there's going to be like a love triangle in season 2 with Ruben and her and Sam because Ruben Sam's going to die <laughs> they say it's going <laughs> to die <laughs> I would never root for like Sam is such a great guy. I would never root for him. <laughs> I think he's epic, but I'm biased also with Sam. So Me, when on. there's a problematic guy, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'd be like a big De- Dean, Jess, Rory. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Any kind of there's a nice guy, and then the problematic. You know, I'm gonna go for the problematic <laughs> every time. Um, he's a sad boy. He's not a bad boy. He's a sad boy. <laughs> but nice was part of Rosalind's squad, but obviously he's gonna have now like probably thoughts like yeah. Then this guy's gonna look at him with like a. Sad he face. definitely team Rosalind. Well, he's with Bill. Bill, I was gonna say Bellatrix. Bellatrix <laughs> and and Co. Beatrice. Yeah. <laughs> Beatrice, yeah. <laughs> Beatrice. <laughs> Um, I hope he's not with him with him. I feel like he's gonna. I hope he was just like catching on shit and just being like a normal teenager. And now that he sees like the weight of what's happening, he's like, oh, wait, Mm. no, this is not the team that I'm on. Mm. Because I don't don't think he's a bad person. I honestly don't think he's a bad person. Beatrix, on the other hand, I think she's a hot garbage. Oh, hot mess. I mean, like I thought, like oh my gosh, when she went to 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 jail, or whatever, I was like, she's finally free of her because he would just seem like he was like chatting yes. with Sarah. He was just doing other stuff with his life. Yeah, he and looked then, so happy. Then that time, but I had to bring him back into this mess again. I was like, oh, why? No, Dane. One thing about Dane, he can die next season. Also, <laughs> him and Sam up first. <laughs> <laughs> Up first, <laughs> the sacrificial lambs to the slow. You can't also kill the only queer character, um, Sloan. Is he though? Was it yeah. ever confirmed? I'm sure of it. That would be he liked one Instagram picture. <laughs> they never actually confirmed anything. Okay, that's another thing. It was like in season two. They should be like, what yeah, don't queer bait me. Don't queer bait me. Mm. If you're gonna have a gay, have a gay. Go balls to the wall, gay. Okay, wait, and then the the final wings character, Stella. I really like Stella. I really liked Stella's development. 
Because at first she really was like that bitchy mean girl, and then, mm-hmm. but then she grew. I mean, I feel like there was very little development on Stella's part. No, I don't know if she grew or if she just. Well, I mean, she did have quite a big. I think that Stella. I think that Stella is just tagging along right now, because she doesn't know where she's going in life. I feel like um, maybe because she was. Thinks- she thought that she was at the top of the food chain. And then life humbled her. Mm. And then she saw that she didn't have friends. And then she was just like, okay, let me just go with these losers then. I Until would... I decide what I'm going to do. Hi, and now she's just with them. I was laughing when she told the mother, like, oh, I can't even, I didn't even get to say goodbye to my friends. I'm like, what friends? Oh, ma'am, who? Oh, when somebody, oh, I was, I was also very confused when Tira was so upset that she didn't say goodbye. I was like, ma'am, she, she insults you all day, every day. What are you talking about? <laughs> when let Tira at least said, like, to the other one, make fun of my dress. Like, it's going to make me feel better. And I'm like, oh, that's trauma. Like, <laughs> you don't miss your friend. Like, you need to go and talk to a therapist. <laughs> that's trauma. Exactly. That is trauma. Like, why would you ask someone to make fun of you? I was like, how much of this relationship happened off screen? Because I, I don't even... Yeah. When I was talking to her as well, I was like, you're talking like you guys are like besties. But Ooh. I didn't see it. But what I wanted to say about Steel is that I, I don't know, just there's so much potential to the character. And I think, mm. like, uh, I don't want to talk about the cartoon all the time, but in the cartoon, she's my favorite. She's just like, she's just like materialistic and stuff, but she's like, but everybody loves her. They used to like, get annoyed with her, but she's just like unashamedly so, man. Like, unashamedly. Oh, yeah. Like, she just She'll make fun of you. She will, she will talk about <laughs> like how great her life is and then like, about the pe- make fun of her parents. And I'm just like, I just love her. She's just herself. And, but with this, the, the Wing Saga one, I just see a lot of potential in the character, I think. She's very sad because of the blind She's thing. too sad. That's my problem with thing. her. She's too sad. She could have just been a rich bitch and I would have bought it. Mm. I would have ate it up. But now she also has feelings. <laughs> and she has mommy <laughs> issues. And I'm like, um, no, you only have six episodes. You guys cannot waste time <laughs> on mommy issues. But hey, my mom is the worst, though. How much Her mom worse? is the literal worst. Yo. A mom's gonna have more of a say in the school. The school is gonna be like a mom plus the person who was like a mom. The the principal is dead. Yeah. So it's gonna get worse for. Her. It's good she has friends now. <laughs> oh shit. So um okay so let's talk about the end of the show. What did you guys think of the end? I really didn't expect father's death. I, I definitely actually, I did not got... expect that. That was a shock to me. That was a great moment in television. Mm. I love a good twist right at the end. How... And I How don't they... know if I believe this whole... Rosalind and the evil people taking over the school thing like it might get a little boring like two three episodes into the new season mm. so I hope that what they wrap Rosalind's that up motivation? what is her motivation the yeah, mo- other thing is that there's going to be something worse coming than the burn ones and that Bloom is the only like the person that's going to help them she's literally crazy because she was talking about blood witches and stuff and I this one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Beatrix is not a blood witch or something like that. But Beatrix is an air witch. Air fairy, whatever. Or air fairy, whatever. Uh, or like she's half, half. I feel like she she must have some kind of connection to the blood witches. So mm. the blood witches are humans that live in the other world. Also, does the, the school name Althea not sound like a, like a colored on? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Every time they were like Althea, I was like, I'm imagine somebody <laughs> with like a rollers. But um <laughs> But anyway, like the blood witches are 
uh, of humans that live in the other world that's also witches, but like does do some weird magic stuff. I was a, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I didn't understand the burn ones. They were human, but they were they oh, were yes. like olden time clothes. I didn't like. I didn't either. know what was going on there, and there was too much between the blood witches, the the burnt ones, and this other thing that's coming, and Rosalind and Beatrix and all of that. Like I feel like there's, there's a lot going on here, and I understand that maybe Rosalind is like the main canine at the end of this, but I actually literally thought that she was controlling the burnt ones. I also thought so. And that she was now like, because that's why. I, but then mm, it's it's it confused me a bit. So okay, so like, what what other supernatural shows would you recommend to somebody that really that enjoyed Winks or enjoyed the vibe of Winks? So yeah, and you can go. I mean, I, no, don't let me go first. I can't even know what I'm gonna say. Say it. Oh my word. Um, <laughs> the one that I enjoyed. Last year, yeah, this was in lockdown one, as I call it, <laughs> um, was Warrior Nun. Okay. Oh, yes. Warrior Nun was excellent. Tell that was it. very, very good. Um, literally, it's about Warrior Nuns. That's so good. And I this one Losa girl that gets <laughs> caught up in this whole <laughs> situation. <laughs> But it's very, very good. It's a slow build, but like the action, like right at the end, is excellent. It's really good. Oh, the, um, a discovery of witches also is really good. <gasps> very good. A yes. Discovery of witches is really, really good. Um, for me, also like on like the witch vibe, one I liked is called um, Motherland Fort Salem. I seen. I've seen that. I just I haven't gotten around to watching it yet. So it's like this these witches like in post apocalyptic and they're almost like going to the military. But it's these three mm. teen witches and they're like in this like military school vibes. But like it's it's actually really good and the and the um the storyline is tight and but it's also like fun and it's like interesting story of three girls. Um but yeah, it also gives you that all like mm. squad girls, but we're all different yeah. and we also at the school where we're learning to become better witches and Reminds me a lot of Winx. So which of the, ca- the Winx characters do you think you the most like? So Sloane, you can go first now. Oh my god. Which of the characters? Mm. Can I be honest? Yes. Farah. Well, we- oh wow. She has quite cool powers. Also. Isn't she sort of like mind also? Well, I was going to ask, what's her power? Because she's got like a little mind situation oh, okay. going on. Didn't she try and read that young burnt dude's mind also at one point? The... Mm. I may not have been paying attention. <laughs> yeah, that's when they had him like shackled up there in the barn. Oh, yes. And you say, Anne, which one do you think you most like? I feel like I'm most like Musa, just put, like, put on my earphones, even if nothing's playing so people don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that so many times. I do that, I but only like to I'm listen to like conversation. A, also... <laughs> 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 I think I'm like most like um, Aisha, mainly because I'm just so like, um, like by the book. And a okay. snitch. Yeah, but it was snitch. snitch. I don't think I'll be brave enough to be a snitch, to be honest. I'll be more like, come and go. Oh, I don't know. Actually, no. I think I'm more like this. I am sick and then stay in the dorm while the rest then go in their tunnel. I'm, I'm sick. <laughs> like, I'm Cramps. sick. <laughs> and then, and then and maybe a bit of terror as well. But like a mixture of those two. Um, okay, so, so so let's to make this crashing on. So which character were you crashing oh, on? Raven, Heike, Raven. And Raven and Silva. Uh, oh my god, I'm gonna double down and say same Z's. We're the same one in the same place. Mostly Silva. Um, <laughs> but then there was a point where Raven wasn't annoying anymore. Mm. And I was just like, oh wow, okay, hi. When he wasn't with when he wasn't under Beatrix's throne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, my first crash was was Bloom's um, adopted father. I was like, Alyssa. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that tweet. That tweet going on. I saw that tweet. <laughs> I was like, okay, no. but then they didn't show me enough, and then I got bored. Um, so then I was definitely silver. I I wouldn't say Devin because as much as I like him, and it was more like, 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 like almost like a child type vibe. <laughs> like he's just like frivolous, and then okay, he's okay. very irritating. And then, and then, and then when he was like showing chemistry with Musa and showing chemistry with like Tedo, mm. I was like, okay, maybe, but more like, I felt more like I was their mom and I'm like, you know, maybe I will like you with my children. <laughs> <laughs> just the vibe I was getting. But I don't think I was really like, like into the I did, I looked at him, I loved him in a motherly way. <laughs> I was like, Silver, sir. Yes, he died. <laughs> So here's a conversation that I had with Abigail Cohen, who plays Bloom, and Danny Griffin, who plays Sky. Okay, hi, um, Abigail. Um, hi. So we know that Bloom's biological parents are probably coming. So who would be your dream casting for the oh, world? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I'm trying to think of maybe like, I mean, dream casting, like... Nicole Kidman mm. or or like a yeah maybe Meryl Streep oh, oh amazing mom. <laughs> yeah or maybe she could have two moms perfect, perfect. it could be Nicole Kidman and Meryl Streep <laughs> she's two moms there you go <laughs> so Danny um hmm. As a specialist, you obviously don't have magical powers but if you could have one of the fairies powers which one would you want Mm, that's a lovely question. Um, I would probably have, um, and no disrespect to my uh, fellow fairies, but I'd probably have Beatrix's powers. I just mm. think she's stupidly badass in the show. Um, I mean, they all are, but I mean, for me, uh, to be able to can like kind of almost control the weather, I mm. think that's pretty cool, um, you know, for me anyway. So, Abigail, um, you've played a witch. And a fairy now. So what would be, which supernatural creature would you like to play next? Um, question. I don't know. I Maybe some type of um, like mermaid maybe, or like a, what other supernatural creatures are there? Like a, what else, Danny, you know that, what other supernatural like things are there? It's brilliant, isn't it, when you get these questions because you, your brain just suddenly forgets every it magical thing up, in the yeah. world. Um, uh, I mean, okay. Um, I don't know. You can play a wizard. It'd be pretty cool. Um, oh, you've actually you played a witch, and the opposite of a wizard is a witch. I think for a, a... or like a superhero, I would love to do mm. like a Marvel superhero or something. I think that would be freaking awesome. Like, I think that would be so cool. I don't know if that's like supernatural, but supernatural. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah. Okay then, um, Danny. So you've so so the whole point of Sky's character is that he's dealing with a lot of father issues. Hmm. So, how do you think that you know, knowing what he knows now about his father, he will move forward in season two? Um, oh, I hmm, I don't know. Um, I think there's so many directions they could go. Uh, I mean. You know, I, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Um, uh, but like, I think for, I think it'll be a different, it'll be a fresh take, I think. Um, I'm not really sure, because I don't know, uh, hypothetically, if there was a season two, I, I don't know what Brian would be thinking, a brilliant showrunner. But um, I I, um, I think, I, I don't know, I, I'd like him to sort of have a relationship with his father. Because he desperately, mm. in season one, you know, he's he's crying out for a father figure um, a lot. Um uh, and you know, and and Silver sort of can't give up to him because he's just you know he he's in his head he is the military and he is the person who has to sort of a great responsibility to make sure that everyone's prepared for you know um, uh, if there was a war. Um, but uh, and I think Sky desperately wants a father figure. So I think now finally he if he if he actually gets that then it will be um, I don't know it'd be really interesting to see sort of how he reacts if he, if he actually does want it it's like, it's like wanting um i don't know it's like that uh, notion about wanting something for ages and ages and ages and you finally get it and then you're like oh, i don't actually want it now um it's not really it's not thing i was 
not really my thing. Um, you want something else. Uh, so I think maybe, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. And Abigail, so so how, so you guys, bought, in the show, you guys bonded really well. And you got, we see um, Bloom going from having no friends to having a lot. So how quickly did you guys bond as a cast? <laughs> per se, literally like per se. I mean, <laughs> yeah. literally like that. And we're not even kidding. It was just yeah immediately i i have been saying this since day one i mean we hit the jackpot with the cast i mean mm -hmm. everyone just clicks and it was from day one and when you have a chemistry like that it just makes everything else just a breeze and filming and it just all of it even press all of it it's just fun it's like you're hanging out with your friends and it doesn't feel like which it never feels like work, but it just makes it all the more fun. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, we definitely Completely. clicked immediately. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, okay. thank you. Next up, I have a chat that I had with Alicia Applebaum, who plays Musa, and Hannah van der Westesen, who plays Stella. Funny enough, um, Hannah is actually half South African. I had no idea before I chatted to her. So it was really lovely. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Um, Alicia, uh, because Musa's powers were all internal, what is the most challenging part of playing an empath? Um, I think it's just having just something grumbling in your tummy all the time, like having all these emotions riled up, but you have to keep it so down, like it all has to be in here. Um, and I think that's the most difficult thing to do um, because it's quite painful to do. And as an actor, like everybody else gets to like shoot things and like, and you have to... <laughs> To, to to display it all on your face like wasn't that difficult <laughs> it, it it was especially like every time we did a scene it would be like now we need to look into the eyes um but I think it's really great have knowing what her backstory is in order for her to feel all this emotion and go in she's actually going through quite a lot of shit and she's she's in a school with loads of teenagers that are just feeling round up all the time so it, it's all kind of there anyway once you've done the homework okay um so Stella oh Hannah <laughs> um when we first meet Stella <laughs> she's a bit of an antagonist so until we get to know her yeah. so what did you enjoy more playing the villainy part of her or when she's part of the hero squad I think it was such a treat to be able to kind of be cruel, but know that no one's feelings were getting hurt. It was like really good fun. Um, but honestly, when, when you know, all the moments where we see her soften and, and smiling and, and connecting with the girls, like mm -hmm. it was just such a relief because I was like, I love my friends so much. It's really hard to pretend that we don't get on. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> went from 100% effort to like zero effort, which is great. <laughs> So Alicia, um, in the original series, um, Musa is in a relationship with Riven, and there's a lot of fans out there who love them together. So do you think the fans have a shot of seeing that on screen? Who knows? Who knows? There was one scene in series yeah. one uh, which kind of tickled it a little bit, but um, who knows? Okay. So Hannah, so Stella's obviously dealing with a lot of issues with her mother. Um, do you think we'll see her rebelling against her more in season two? What do you hope? Oh, I hope so. Stella is such a little, like, she's got a fire burning inside of her. She's definitely got so much to her. I think she, you know, her kind of epic journey is to really stand up to her mom and to step into her mm -hmm. own power and her own self-esteem, I guess. So definitely definitely there's there's scope for her to stand up to her mom so um alicia in in season one um who says a secret relationship with sam which allows her to grow more so how would you like to see her grow more in season two um 
I think it would be great if she learned more about her powers in order to mm. fight some battles. Because I don't know if you remember, but um, there's a battle where she kind of just goes like this. And then she says, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's dead yet. Um, so I think, I think it'd be really great if she could fight next season. <laughs> okay. And Hannah, um, so which one of the Wings characters do you think you are, are more like? To be honest, I think I'm probably most like Tara in, re- in real life. I feel like that's, I don't know, maybe Alicia could shed more light on that. No, I, I feel agree, like I actually, sense. to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Alicia, if you could have any of the Wings powers, which one would you want? Um, I, think, I think it would be... Uh, so that I can um, create my own bouquets <laughs> of flowers. <laughs> and you, Hannah, which power would you want? Um, I think I'd, I'd like to go down the route of Tinkerbell and, and, and be an air fairy. Mm. It's a little bit different. <laughs> That's a brilliant answer. Thank you so much, guys. That was perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so Lovely glad. To meet you. And finally, I also chatted with Precious Mustafa, who plays Aisha, Aisha, and Elliot Salt, who plays Tara. Okay, hi guys. Hello. Hi. So, um, okay, let's start with Elliot. Um, so, because your character is new, did you feel less pressure to live up to what the fans wanted? I think so, and I think because I um the. The Winx franchise had slightly passed me by growing up. I think I was the wrong mm-hmm. age. So I, I didn't really know quite quite what a huge thing it is around the world. And um, I'm quite pleased I didn't because I think I would have been terrified. <laughs> um, but it really felt like a new world that we were part of creating and, and um, getting to build a character from, from the ground up was, yeah, really fun. Mm, can you imagine? So Precious, um, in the series, uh, um, Aisha had a very difficult decision between what she believed what was right and going along with her friends. So what would you have done in a situation like that? Um, I think in a situation like that, I would probably not agree with it, but still go along with my friends just mm. because of the FOMO. <laughs> I wouldn't want <laughs> I just wouldn't want to miss out on whatever happened and like (laughs) now I feel like Aisha probably feels bad yeah I'd never snitch and I feel like Aisha probably feels bad now because she's missed out on like major stuff like she don't know what happened in in there in that tunnel they went through you know she's just yeah I I definitely go along along with the friends I'm really yeah. rubbing it in because I keep bringing up the tunnel today. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know, no, that's a personal joke. That's for tunnel people only. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, Elliot, um, we really got to see Tira gaining confidence in herself throughout the season. So where would you like to see the character go in season two? Oh, where would I like to see her go? Um, I, 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 I'd love to see her keep going from strength to strength. I'd mm. like to see her have... Um, have a successful love interest because uh I feel like she 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 was very unlucky in that regard in this <laughs> series I think it would be yeah. nice for for that to for her to um find a, a good match mm. um yeah I think so I think she should spend more time with Aisha as well because oh, we didn't yeah. get enough scenes together we really didn't no <laughs> oh well <laughs> <laughs> And Precious, where would you like to see Aisha going, like post snitching and all that kind of thing? Where would you like to see her going season two. <laughs> well, I think Aisha should get some help for the snitching situation. I'm joking. No, um, I think <laughs> I think I'd like to see um, I'd like to figure like find out a bit more about her uh, background and why she decided mm. to come to Althea. Um, maybe a bit about her family. Um, yeah, I think I think it'd be nice to know why she is the way she is, and um, mm. however however we, that is, 
but yeah it'd be nice to know like why why she is so organized yeah rigid <laughs> so if, if you could have any of the wings powers which one would you want any of the wings powers i would keep earth actually i really mm. like it i think um it would save me a lot of time with these guys um <laughs> and my <laughs> And and the ones that are off camera, which I have killed, would would still be with us. So that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you, precious, which which power would you like to? Have? Oh, I think maybe light. I think the idea of like being able to control light and how people see things would be quite fun. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, I think that would be my my power, my go to. Okay. Okay, then, okay, one more. Elliot, if, um, which one of the cast is more likely to be a secret fairy? Oh, you know what, Precious? Because she's the only one that wouldn't tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if any of the rest of us were fairies, we'd be like, guys, I'm not supposed to tell anyone, but guess what? <laughs> and I feel like Precious would keep it to herself. <laughs> no, I, I would, I would, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you, lovely to meet you. Me too. Bye. And that's all for our special Fate the Wink Saga episode. The show is available to watch currently on Netflix. Sloane you can find at at Sloane Said So on Twitter. And Zayan you can find at at Zayan27 on Twitter. The links to everything di- they discussed and all the recommendations they made will be in the show notes. Also look out for our special Valentine's Day episode coming up soon. We'll be collaborating with Zama from Star and Cupid to discuss our favorite fictional ships. It's a, it'll be a lot of fun. Until then, you can find me at Karen Walbees on Twitter and at Karen Walby without the S on Instagram. You can subscribe to my newsletter at wildestreams.substack.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube. We're going to have the videos of my interviews with the actors on the YouTube channel as well as much more. And also don't forget to tag us on Instagram when you listen to the episode. We really appreciate it. Thanks again. The podcast can be found at, at Crushing on Pod on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. You can find more information about this and all our other episodes at our website, crushingonpodcast.com and send any feedback to crushingonpod at gmail.com. Join our Facebook group, Crushing On Club, where we chat about the show, celebrity news, recommendations, the whole shebang. Let us know what you think about what was discussed in this week's episode by sending us a voice note or email to crushingonpod at gmail.com. The show is produced by me, Karen, and Rebecca Barches. The show is edited and engineered by Rebecca Barches. Our logo was designed by Nathifa Maruf. And the show was created in partnership with IGN Africa. If you like the show, tell everyone that you can any way that you can. Keep up to date with all our episodes by subscribing to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And please rate and review the episodes on Apple Podcasts, as it helps others find the show. We'll be back next week with another in-depth conversation with a pop culture lover. See you then!